Welcome back to Filter. I'm Diane Mizoda, counting down the games that changed gaming forever. The rankings for Filter shows come directly from the responses you post on the G4 website. To make your vote count, log on to G4TV.com slash filter and select the filterator. Then choose a category, vote on a scale of 1 to 10, and we'll take care of the rest. While you're there, be sure to post your suggestions for topics and games you'd like to see covered in future episodes. Of course, if you're a fan of the game at number seven, you've probably been making your voice heard for years now. With SimCity creator Will Wright tapped into a gold mine, the ability to let gamers live out the lives they had always imagined for themselves rather than leaving the ones they were destined to. Right this way to a god complex. <laughs> changed gaming because it gave you a really big playground to play in. So it's basically a huge puzzle that what it looked like at the end, it was your choice, but you had to follow these rules. So it was like this ongoing kind of like struggle between your creativity and the rules the game makers put in there. It makes you think, I think, in a, in a way that many games did not before that and um, sort of like set up its own little genre of simulation uh, games, which of course will write his mind quite successfully since then. <laughs> God mode. First time you can be God. First time you can build and destroy. And my favorite part of SimCity was actually making building cities and destroying them. You know, hurricanes and earthquakes and that was a blast. It's killing people. I mean, in the game. I mean, <laughs> in the game. Not in real life. <laughs> SimCity brought the simulation genre into the mainstream, which gives it plenty in common with our next game when it comes to paternal bragging rights. Super Mario 64 perfected the concept of the 3D platformer, allowing millions of Mario fans the chance to roam unrestricted in an open-ended 3D world. For that, we award the sixth spot. a big Mario fan that he named his firstborn son after the mustachioed plumber. So that led us to wonder, sure, a game can have an impact on its peers, but what kind of impact can it have on you? Here's what a few of you had to say. The gaming experience that I remember was playing Popeye at Acme Supermarket in Collegeville, Pennsylvania. You know, to like a three-year-old, four-year-old kid back then, which I was, I was just stunned. And I think that started my current addiction. The gaming experience that got me hooked was probably Pac-Man, like a lot of people. I was four years old, and I was at a pizza place with my family, and I took all my parents' quarters, and I played for two hours. I barely had a slice, just kept on playing Pac-Man, and from there I got an Atari, and now it's a PS2 and Xbox. The story never ended. What got me into gaming would be my ColecoVision, because they, because that was one of the first systems that actually put a lot of the arcade games, and made them look like the arcade games. I remember for the first time playing Super Mario Brothers at my my uncle's house when he had a Nintendo and just being enthralled with just, you know, the fact that I'm playing, you know, have a controller and the guy on the screen is doing, you know, what I tell him to do basically and it's just, you know, it was an amazing experience. I remember the first time I played uh, Super Mario Brothers and I, uh, I, I can't, you know, I don't think it was the first scrolling game but I remember that I got to the edge of the screen and it kept going. I was like, I guess those games kind of redefine the concept of high impact. And now it's time for a heavy hitter that made its mark on the competition. Look into the pupils of GoldenEye 007 and you'll find a multiplayer shooter that blazed a trail so hot that it would be five years before anybody could even come close to matching it. By steering a transition for first-person shooters from the PC to the home console, GoldenEye 007 raised the bar to new heights. It stands tall at spot number five.
is all about the suave delivery, which gives him absolutely nothing in common with the star of our next game. Grand Theft Auto 3's lead character may not have had a name, but he sure did make a hell of a lasting impression. Perhaps that's because he got to tussle with gangbangers and tango with prostitutes in this. One of the first games on record to let you do everything, and I do mean everything, under the lawless sun in a real, living, breathing, fully rendered human world. GTA 3 comes in at 4. Grand Theft Auto 3 for the PS2, that took game to a whole new level, you know, you could be a vigilante or follow the story and not follow the story, you can just, you know, go relieve stress from your day. It was open in the game that you could do anything, you're a criminal in a city, go have fun. I think any game that makes everything in in the game world available to you, it makes you able to identify with the game more. With the amount of water cooler chatter spurred by GTA 3, it's no surprise that it made our list. What is a surprise, however, is some of the games that just missed the list. When we come back from the break, we'll show you a few games that got filtered out, and then we'll shed some light on the out-and-out -out favorite. Does Link star in the most influential game ever, or is he doomed to suffer at the hands of a hardcore shooter? Stick around and find out when Filter returns.